Good evening, and welcome back to Music Minute. This tomorrow is Trinity, Holy Trinity Sunday, and so uh, you might be able to guess at least one of the hymns, um, but maybe we'll keep you guessing on the other two for a minute. And I'm going to go in a different order than we're going to sing them tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to start with Let All Things Now Living, and you'll probably recognize the tune to that. Uh, this was written by uh, Catherine Davis, and maybe not a name that we've overly heard or are familiar with, um, but she was actually quite prolific. Uh, she wrote 800-some choral pieces and arrangements, and she actually suffered a nervous breakdown in 1930, and at that point in time, she devoted her entire life to arranging, composing, and editing, and that's when she created those 800 things. Uh, she had many pseudonyms, including John Cowley and C.R.W. Robertson. So you might have different names that you'd have to look for to get this, these works. Uh, the tune for this is um, uh, The Ash Grove. That's a Welsh tune, and it's really based and created for harp. So harpists, um, when you recognize the tune, you might figure out that it's a really kind of a harp song as it flows along. And it was very popular in England. Uh, tonight, we're going to do an arrangement by Aaron David Miller, which does not sound harp-like at all. Um, it's actually jazz, uh, Celtic jazz at that. So uh, this will be a different tune on it, or a different approach to it, and hopefully you'll enjoy Let All Things Now Living. in a little bit of another tune that we heard a few weeks ago. Do you, did you hear it? Pick it out in there. Uh, towards the end, you had a little bit of... Love Divine, All Love's Excelling that we did just a few weeks ago. So we're going to switch over to the organ now. This is always fun when you have to watch the movie by now. So, as I mentioned, tomorrow is the Holy Trinity, Sunday. And we are going to be singing Holy, Holy, Holy. And this piece was actually written for Holy Trinity. 
uh, for that Sunday. It's based on Revelation 4, and that came from the Book of Common Prayer at the time, back in the 1800s. And some churches in the 20th century, you may recognize, I know we have some folks in choir that have said this, uh, that sang this as the opening hymn for worship every week. And there were actually quite a few uh, denominations that practiced that in the 20th century. Uh, what's unique about this tune is that the meter is strange. So, you know, talk about meter, you may or may not be aware of what that is. In your hymnal, if you're ever bored and you want to look down at the bottom, you can see lots of information about the, the hymn and who wrote the words, who wrote the music, uh, what the tune name is, and you can also find out what the meter is. Those are all the numbers in the bottom right-hand corner in small print. Uh, and this one is strange because it's a peculiar meter. Uh, it's very difficult to fit words uh, and tune together. So there are not many other things that you can fit these, uh, these words to. Uh, the tune name... Um, is uh, probably one of the most um, frequently uh, not agreed upon pronunciations. So it's N-I-C-A-E-A. -E -A. And uh, so you might see that as Nikea, like Ikea, or you might see it, hear it said as Nicaea, um, and it's really not um, pronounced as to you know, which one is the right way, I don't know. Um, it actually comes from the city uh, where the Nicene Creed in 325 was formulated, so it does have some historical relevance. Uh, the the um, tune was written by a composer who wrote about 300 tunes, uh, dikes, and 276 of those ended up being published, so pretty prolific as well. Uh, and this particular one, this is a triptych, so that's three different things. Uh, the first one will focus on Our Song Shall Rise to Thee, and you'll probably hear that in the music. The second one is All the Saints Adore Thee, that's a little more introspective. And then the last finale is All the Works That Praise Thy Name. And you'll hear lots of praise and lots of busyness in that last one.
crazy name going on. Lots of busyness there. All right. And for our final hymn for this week, it is Voices Raised to You We Offer. And that's a newer hymn for us. Um, this is actually an Association of Lutheran Church Musicians, ALCM uh, hymn that was commissioned for the organization's 10th anniversary in 1996. And uh, it was first performed at 100 ALCM sponsored hymn festivals on, on Reformation Sunday, all that same day in 1996. Uh, so it's designed to capture um, and help the church uh, assembled for worship, dispersed for service, remember that we're always living towards the aspect of eternity. So it's always that, that glow, that, that distant glow that we're trying to get to. Uh, you'll notice tomorrow when we sing it, the words uh, follow a fairly predictable pattern. It's sort of a four beat kind of a thing. And then the alleluias will break that up. And that's going to break the predictable pattern. It goes into something different, uh, but very fitting, and where Alleluia's would fit. Um, the, the hymn was written, uh, the tune, by Carolyn Jennings, and the text was Herman Stumpfley. And uh, he was struggling, or she was struggling when he, she was writing, because she had the text, and she wasn't quite sure how to go this, how to fit it in. And this goes back to that peculiar meter that we talked about with Holy, Holy, Holy. It was similar with this one. So she ended up calling uh, the text writer and said, I'm struggling with this, and you know, illustrated where that problem was. And within 24 hours, Herman Simply had gone back and rewritten the version that we sing today, tomorrow. And so that was a good uh, partnership for the two of them. Uh, this will be a five-part piece. It's a little bit longer. Um, it's a partita on voices raised to you we offer and you'll hear all sorts of different colors of the organ which is fun and uh, you can think about the text if you have your hymnal with you it's 845 in the hymnal you can look through and uh, see where the text lines up with some of these images that you'll hear
always reaching for eternity. So thank you for joining me tonight. I uh, hope you found some relaxation in that as you sat and uh, listened. Or you can go back and listen again if you'd like, and it will be lo loaded on YouTube again uh, after this service as well. And we'll see you tomorrow morning for worship. There is the Apostles' Creed at 9 o'clock, and I think there's still Legos. Uh, Coffee and Donuts is also at 9 o'clock tomorrow. So thank you again for joining. Have a good evening.